My name is Barb Thomas and I'm here at the University of Alberta in the Department of Renewable Resources and am an Associate Professor and hold an Industrial Research Chair in Tree Improvement. Resilient forests are an enormous challenge for us here in Alberta. We have climate change approaching. It's already here. We've got all sorts of examples of it in terms of both drought and insects moving in and attacking our forests. One of the avenues we have to try and address this issue is through tree improvement. And we have many programs designed in both our pine and spruce programs as well as other species to select individuals that are better adapted and that grow quickly. What we're trying to do with this program is take advantage of genomics to be able to reduce the amount of time it takes to test our progeny. Now that forest rotation length is 80 to 100 years. It takes 20 to 30 years to make a solid, good decision about testing those progeny and knowing the best parents. We need to be able to understand the fitness and the resilience of the parents that we're using to provide seed for forests of the future. So the part we're actually trying to tackle that's unique and new and taking advantage of genomics in this project is reducing that testing phase of 30 years down to 10. That's the part that's the real bonus in time savings so that we can adjust more quickly, we can get rid of parents out of programs that aren't well adapted, that aren't drought tolerant, that show no resilience to uh, a resistance to insects and pests. What we're doing with this project is we're expanding our knowledge about those parents and our phenotyping, as it's called, through understanding their chemical profiles and their metabolomic profiles. And we take tissue samples and we process those samples and we determine what some of those metabolites are, some of those chemical responses are, and we're going to link that back to how healthy and vigorous and robust those parents are. And we're going to do that ultimately by linking it back to their genomes. In addition, we're also going to add a physiological component. We're measuring gas exchange, water use efficiency, stomatal conductance in these plants. We're measuring progeny trials because we have the luxury of trees that are 30 years old. To go out and measure from those parents, we're going to grow new seed from the same parents and we're going to put them in a greenhouse experiment and we're going to kick them and we're going to kick them hard. We're going to put them under a drought stress and we're going to subject them to insects and we're going to look at those chemical and metabolomic profiles under those different stressed biotic and abiotic stress factors. Biotic being, of course, the insects and abiotic being a drought treatment. This way, we'll learn far more about those parents and which ones should be producing ultimately seed for our forest for the future as we adjust and adapt to this incredibly rapid pace of climate change that we're seeing here in Alberta. It's definitely a race. It's a race against time. And whether we can take advantage of these technologies, which have just had a breakthroughs, really, in terms of what they've been able to deliver, showing us what we can do in terms of the genome sequencing, the opportunity that's there to allow us new methods of integrating the knowledge about the physical phenotypic responses, chemical profiles, metabolic profiles, physiological responses, wood quality issues, and directly link that as a package back to the genome and to be able to better understand what we've got in those parents. It is definitely a race against time.
One of the benefits of the way we're going to do the genotyping on these trees means that that information is going to be available long term. So as new phenotypic characteristics are assessed on these trees, you can go back and remine that data over and over and over and build new matrices to make decisions about appropriate selections. And it's a library of information that's going to be available on an interactive website that any of the players who work with these programs are going to be able to go and mine for information and to help them understand how it works, what the opportunities are of introducing it into other programs as a strategy. This is really cutting edge and it's not just doing pure science, it's using active tree improvement programs that are ready to move to the next stage of development. And so we have this opportunity to take all this science and put it into practice and make a real difference for the future in both a pine program and a spruce program, which is a fantastic opportunity for us to be able to work with both programs. There are so many aspects to this project that would be exciting for any researcher to come and join us on, and young students and graduate students and postdocs. We also have other areas that we haven't even mentioned here, and that's the whole social sciences integration and economics components that are also big parts of this project. So we're really looking at the whole package of entire benefit right through the economic system and looking at the acceptance, the public acceptance of what we call genomic assisted tree breeding and also what policies need to be put in place to assist with that uptake and utilization of this new information. Because current policy in this province would not recognize this method of picking trees and parents uh, as, a, as a viable way to select and manage what we call seed orchards. This is new.